What's up everyone, it's Jim for OnPoint Samples, and in this video I'm going to walk you through and explain our new KickFX plugin, which is for FStudio Patcher. So that's the first thing, let's get that out of the way. It's not for Ableton Logic or Cubase, it's only for FStudio Patcher. It's a preset made for FStudio Patcher, which is a great plugin with which you can actually make more plugins. So you add stuff on the map, and then on the surface you make knobs to control things in the, surf, uh, in the map. That is how it works. So secondly, it's a free plugin. So make sure to download that for free on our website. The link is below. Grab that right now. Then I'm just going to show you how you load up the preset. So we had a few questions about that. So what you literally do is take the, uh, the preset, you put it in your packs folder or your desktop, wherever you want it. And you literally just drag and drop it in your mixer. So if you have the most latest FL Studio version, this will work perfectly fine. And here you go, you load it up. But if you have a lower FL Studio version, just open Patcher right here and then just drag and drop this preset inside of Patcher. So it will literally take Patcher inside of Patcher. And then you kind of bypass the problem with not having the right FL Studio version. So another thing you can do is go to plugin presets right here, open the effects folder, go to Patcher and then right click Windows shell menu and then you open it. And then inside of this thing here, you actually add the preset. So what this will do is allow you to go into Patcher and then find the preset right here. All right. So that's how you make this work. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about the plugin. So what it actually does is it, it creates instant kick effects. So let's say we have this loop with one of our early kicks that you can find in Uptempo and Hardcore Essentials right here, a big folder of early kicks. And it sounds like this. Okay, that's fun. Nice. So normally you would make kick effects in a pretty, uh, in a normal way, right? And I'm not saying this plugin is the end station for how you actually make your kick effects. It's just a nice way to get some inspiration and it, you can get some pretty cool crunches out of it. So what I'm going to do is load up our kick effects plugin right here. You play it and you see that it's not working at all. So the first thing you need to do is click enable and then it works. <laughs> You get it? So how do you make this work at certain points of your drop? Create an automation clip of this button. And then at sort certain points where you want your kick effects like this, just open it up. There you go. Pretty simple. Which is pretty nice. So what you can do now, before I t tell you like all the things you can do with the plugin, you can use the processing stage. So as you can hear, the dynamics of this whole crunch gets too loud or too soft compared to your kick roll or your actual your normal kick without effect. So that's why we added the pretty cool processing stage. And in this processing stage, you can change the gain, you can change the compression, you can add saturation, you can limit it, you can make it more crisp. So you, we add an EQ, remove some mids, add some highs, so make it more crispy. And then you can disable stereo right here and you can make it stereo. So there you go. If I take the effect without stereo or like stereo on very soft mode, here you go. You'll hear it stereoized. So here's the control stage. You can actually disable that as well. It's just nice to match this to the volume of your actual kick. So if I take a normal kick and then our kick roll like this. You'll hear it's a different type of volume, right? So you can make that match and it's pretty nice to have this stage here. So let's talk about the actual plugin and the things it can do. So if we take a kick effect like this, the most important thing you need to realize first is all the, the different areas. So this area here is a EQ cut. It's Pure, purely EQ cut and I'll show you in more detail in a minute but this is the EQ cut here's another EQ here's a filter so if you enable the post filter it's not a pre-filter these things here are pre-EQ so we have an EQ then you have distortion and then you have a post filter and you know the difference between this um, EQing before distortion and after distortion if you EQ before distortion and create filters you get such that's how you make kick effects but afterwards you just filter it and it sounds like a filter so as you can hear Right now, you don't hear anything because we didn't enable a filter. So if we enable this, we need to say, OK, let's make it a low pass filter 100 percent. And otherwise, it's just, you know, this is kind of the level. 
this is an, a path that goes through a low pass filter, but you need to make sure that the pad has volume. So now we have a low pass filter. And as you can see, you can change it here. And you can do the same thing with a high pass like this. And then you have a band pass, of course. Or it's a band stop, sorry. And we can add resonance. Like this. So you can enable all of them and then you get a weird stuff. Like then you get really weird stuff. But anyways, that's a filter. Then you can uh, literally add some effects. So these are post effects. Then we have a phaser and a resonance. So you can tweak it. Same with the flanger and a ring modulator. All these things together sound pretty cool. Then we have a post distortion thing. So here's a distortion mix without it. You can hear nothing happen. So the only thing you hear is the EQ that goes over the kick. That's this EQ and this EQ. But if we add some distortion, there you go. So now if I bit crush it, it's nice. But if I add post distortion, it actually gets another distortion after all these effects. So it's just to crank to make it more spicy. So right, first the effect, no more distortion. That's another thing you need to know. And then finally, you can of course tweak this. So the cool thing here is we have a bass cut. So let me just demonstrate that what happens here. Here's an EQ. So here's our bass cut, which is this one. This looks like, let me detach it. So make it so you can actually keep seeing this. So it's more easy to go through it. So here you go. This is the bass cut. And that is what this does. The slope is this thing. So making it all the way like this gets it to look like this. And this gets it to look like this. So that's our base cut right here. This here is this cut here, right? So we have a cut here and then we match this to the frequency of the kick. So that makes sense because if we make a kick in E and I put this at E as well, it's going to boost the E frequency, which in, in turn make the, uh, makes the kick effects better so that's why you kind of just look around and find the frequency where your kick gets most resonant so that's one thing so we have this and we have this knob so that is literally this one and this one and of course the slope here is this thing as well so then we have this here which is literally a copy of this one so we have another eq after this with which you can add another extra bend level you can enable and disable it the slope and you can make the frequency change so then we have different levels of eqs and we can really really fine tune our crunch finally once you have kind of found the frequency match of your kick like this right so you made a kick roll uh, let me just uh, you know you enable it and you're like okay You're like this works right you're like okay this is nice then you can just change the resonance of both of these at the same time because you don't want to change the setting anymore because it works for your kick right so then you just go and change this frequency so the combination between those gets moved with this one and then we can change the main resonance too And of course, you can create an automation clip with this as well. So then you can uh, you can go in your project and you can go like, okay, first here, then there, and then up. And then we actually made a kick effect. So of course, it doesn't do this automatically. You need to add these automation clips. But and then we made that. So that's that. Now you actually know how this these knobs work, right? You know that now. And if you don't, just watch the video again. You'll understand better. So, okay, you made this, you made this work, you made an automation clip. Nice. Now you can add a filter. So let's add a low pass. You could add that if you want, but you can also add this. Interesting. Or disable. Or ring modulation which is really crazy, Serio. So you have a lot of functions to change the kick effect. And then finally, here's four different cool modes. So 
The thing is, I couldn't get Glitch and Titan to work separately unless Rhythm was enabled. So if you want to have a Glitch and Titan mode up, you have to enable Rhythm. So what this does is just grow speed. So if we go behind the surface, you'll see how much of a maniac I was to actually be able to create this. There are so many lines and so many knobs, but it finally works. There are four grow speeds. So the signal goes through grow speed or it doesn't go through grow speed. But, you know, here's sidekick effects. What this okay? So what this what it does? It's you just need to make sure you enable rhythm first, and then you can see it creates a rhythm, right? And what you can do, of course, is enable rhythm, and you're like, okay, rhythm is the only option I have. No, you go into the map, you click on grow speed, you find the rhythm grow speed, and you just change it. So and you have so many modes. And of course, you also have like pitch shifters. But there's another mode for that, but one second, you also have turntable list, right? Pretty cool. And then you get all these modes, so you can play around with this. So there you go. So then I added one more, which is glitch. It's another grow speed, of course, and in this grow speed, it's just really glitchy so i use chaos modes and then you get more of a glitch in your kick roll but this only works if rhythm is enabled and then i add a titan which is another gross beat and this one just makes a little bit of uh, um how do you call this here you go it just adds space between the kick rolls and you can change the spaces however you like and just make your own titan up but this really creates a little bit of space between your uh, kick effect and then finally you can add melodic separately from these and what the purpose of this one is is literally to add an arpeggio or something but you can change this to whatever you want There you go. So And then you can gain stage it. So you can see that you can go completely crazy with this plugin. If I play this Like here's the normal kick. And now, of course, I just made this plugin go completely nuts. There's different modes that will sound more beautiful. Like, of course, you can... There you go. So you can instantly make some kick effects. I hope this plug uh, this explain a little bit better for you and it's easier to understand but yeah you have an eq another eq a post filter then we have post effects but you can add more post distortion which goes over these effects and then we have the distortion mix and we have some gross beat modes and we have to enable the plugin to actually work you have gain processing here and all the staging so like eq is saturation to make it match the level of your kick so I recommend you to just really play around with this plugin. Also go behind the map and just try to learn a little bit from it. Uh, there's tutorials online on how to work with Patcher in Evil Studio. It's pretty cool because you can create your own plugins. So next to that, we're working on a new plugin. It's going to be an instant uptempo plugin. We're still working on it. We'll take it a little bit of time, but it will be free. So uh, I hope you're ready for that, I guess. Uh, so that's about it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll get back to them for sure and finally just download this for free it's dope to have it's just nice to drop on your kicks i've been working with it and it's pretty cool there you go thanks for watching have a great day and see you in the next video